Hi. Good morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> go on, Joanna. So I go to sit down. <laughs> Here you go. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a good morning. And I just wanted to start by saying that as a young girl in tech, it is a real honor to be sat with you here today, Corinne. Thank you so much for your time. I know that everyone is so excited to hear from you. We even had cheers in the audience at the start. So I wanted to start with perhaps a question that maybe other people might not start with, with the co-founder of TomTom, but I wanted to ask you about Kodan, which you started fairly recently. And I wanted you, maybe if you could tell us more about what Kodan is, why it started, its mission, and maybe some of the, the impact that you've seen since its start. Well, I think being an entrepreneur in technology, uh, what I've learned and what I've seen over the years, it's all about uh, technology can change the world. And we talked about it earlier. It's about people. It's about talent. And it's about getting this generation to have the digital skills to be able to comprehend and operate that world of tomorrow. And I wanted to demystify what it is, what technology is about. And I find that uh, I found a school in France called 42, where they had a peer-to-peer -peer learning system, where teaching coding, and uh, as well, this was what I was looking for. Um, and so Codam is a school that has uh, no teachers, that's open seven days a week, day and night. Uh, to get in, you don't need to have any pre-qualification, but uh, we do test you for one month. Huh? So often in university, you know, people go and start a course, and after six months, they see that it's not for them. At Codam, for one month, you will learn C, so it's serious programming language. At the end of that month, where you've been working for 70 hours a week, you know whether coding, programming is something you want to do. You would have understood the impact that coding can have on the world. Um, so that's, that's great, and that, that means you won't waste your time. You know it's for you. We know that you'll be able to code. You'll be able to work with your peers. Peer-to-peer -peer learning is something I really believe in. Um, I'm convinced that education at, in its current state, and I know you started at Oxford, so I don't want to uh, take your illusions away. You're one of the best universities in the world, but I think that uh, education as it is today is reaching its limits. And I think I, I'm a big believer in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, engaged student learning when you have contact project-based. Um, so this ticked all the boxes. With a twist, I wanted to have more women in, uh, in technology, more women in coding, and uh, I'm very proud to say that at Codam today we have 25% of women. In our last selection months, we had 40% of women. So we're really getting to parity, which was one of my objectives. So it's a school like no other, no teachers, a very deep, good quality computer science curriculum. Uh, when you come out of CODAM, you're the equivalent of a computer science degree. Uh, for kids that are engaged, they're all smart, they come from everywhere. Uh, it's a very diverse group, so um, I'm super happy. And we have 250 students today, uh, big waiting list, um, and uh, no, it's a great uh, joy. I know some of my so uh, that's great. That's a real big achievement to have achieved so much in so little time, especially to do with gender equality and, and the equivalent of a computer science degree when you leave. And you've been talking about peer-to-peer -peer learning, and as you mentioned, I have just started at Oxford, but I hope you could talk to us a bit more about peer-to-peer -peer learning and why you think that it's a better system than traditional learning and how um, that's implemented at CODAM. Well, I think that there's been some interesting experiment made at uh, MIT. Uh, there was a professor talking about it the other day, and they were, they were measuring the level of interaction and the level of mental awareness of students. And uh, when they were doing uh, a project uh, in a group, you could see that their mental alertness was very high. Actually, even when they slept, it wasn't too bad. When they were in the lecture, in the lecture hall, it went right down. And what you see is that in the world we live in, where we tend to be, there's a lot of stimuli, we, we are engaged. The traditional method in going in a big amphitheater with a lot of other people can be very frustrating. And that's what, so, so that's one thing. The other thing, peer-to-peer -peer means you learn a little bit from someone next to you. There's someone who knows a little bit more. And that peer-to-peer -peer learning function when you have a relatively large group of people and you always find someone that you can talk and relate to. 
I'm very conscious about mental health for young people as well. And I think the other thing is when you feel your self-worth, you know something you can and you've gone through it, if you teach it, you actually learn better. So that's also something that, that's important. But more importantly for this world we're going in, and you've seen all of this about AI, we don't know what the world is going to give us in the next few years. We don't know the jobs that are here today. We know they won't be here tomorrow. The jobs that will be around in the next 20, 30 years have not been invented yet. We're in a world where what we need to learn is learn to learn. In a peer learning system, in a school like Codem, actually we teach C, but we teach, we basically, the students learn to learn. And that's an important skill set for the world we're going in. Things like moving extremely fast, and most of you here, I guess, are in technology involved in one way or another, and you can see the speeds at which things are changing. We are on the verge of a tsunami where technology is going to disrupt the way we work like we've never seen before. And it's going to happen, it's going to take some time for certain industry, but we know for sure it's going to happen. Five years, ten years. This, your generation needs to be able to adapt even much faster than ours. And that peer-to-peer -peer learning, that learning to learn where to find the information, where to adapt, is something those soft skills are particularly important in, uh, in the world that uh, awaits us. It's already starting, but we can see that technology will have a massive impact in the way we operate. And you spoke about the importance of learning to learn. And obviously, as the co-founder of TomTom, Tom, I'm sure there were a lot of lessons when disrupting a new industry. And I was wondering what the greatest lesson you learned from TomTom from Tom was. Well, what I learned at TomTom Tom is technology is very powerful. And we talked before at uh, AI for Good. And I can see, you know, you probably think that digital navigation has always been around. The first sat-navs were introduced in 2004. It's not that long ago, but it has changed, that technology has changed the way we navigate from A to B. The new technologies we at TomTom are working on, which is basically um, autonomous driving, uh, enabling autonomous driving through high-definition mapping and using uh, AI and, and this type of technologies, is showing that technology is going to change the world for good. It's going to take, it's going to make the road safer. It's going to have a big impact. What I have learned is when you're an entrepreneur in technology, you need to try things. You do things that have not been done before. You need to take risk. And for that, you need the right people. And I think that's also the reason why I've set up Codam is I know that innovation works when you put people with different type of background, different type of lenses. Innovation is better through, through diversity. You need to have not only gender diversity, but cultural diversity, neurodiversity, uh, socioeconomic diversity. That's how you innovate faster, and that's how you can impact using technology for good the way the world is going to work tomorrow. So I've learned that. I've learned that tech can change the world. It can make a huge difference in people's lives, but it's based on people, computers and robots. It's all a good story. We've heard it from the speaker before, but it's about people who will be understanding the impact. And for that, we need to train people to and, and young people your generation to really be sitting at that technology table and not on the menu. You should not be only the recipient of all this, uh, the, the, what technology is going to bring you. You should be an active participant and really make a difference and use technology for solving some of the world's problems. Before I open the questions up to the floor, because I've been quite selfish and taken them all myself, but I was hoping I could ask you a question because TomTom Tom very much disrupted using technology a field that, as you said, the first sat-nav was only introduced in 2004. And I was wondering whether you thought that technology was going to disrupt education and learning and what your hopes were for the future of learning and AI. Yeah, I think... I, again, I, I think that, that education, if you look at the amount of, of venture capital money that's going into tech education today, you know that you're onto something. Those guys are not stupid. So there is, 
the education is the one area that's not been disrupted for, for, for all sorts of reasons. It's very complex to disrupt something that's been established for a long time. And uh, uh, you all know, I'm sure, Ken Robinson and his theory about the fact that our education system is based as a result of the Industrial Revolution hasn't been changed since then. So I think there will be a huge uh, wave of new technical education with, with, in, in a different way. So again, peer learning, but also uh, yeah, making access of digital knowledge to a much broader audience as well. You can argue that if you look at code.org and a lot of different initiatives, uh, open classrooms, uh, we can also bring technology education right to people's doorsteps. And that's a very big uh, part of, of improving social mobility which is also an issue we have to deal with today. So I'm a great believer that uh, education will be disrupted, that activities like mine, so from the private sector or the philanthropic sector, showing the education system that things can be done different, uh, showing that we can stay, scale uh, digital education uh, is something that will have a positive impact and make sure we get all the right talent in technology companies to write tomorrow's future. So maybe now if anyone in the audience has a question, oh, hands straight up. Okay, well, there are a couple of questions here. Maybe we can take them really quickly if we can get a mic to them. Is there a mic? Oh, there's one. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll just take those questions quickly. They're very keen. <laughs> Hello, good morning. My name is Christoph. I'm based here in Amsterdam. Um, when you speak of peer-to-peer -peer learning, um, have you seen students using videos to teach each other and or how is Kodam using video in the learning process? Now, at the moment, so we have the, the curriculum has been designed by 42 in France, and there are 20 schools now in that uh, in that uh, network of schools. Uh, the the curriculum has been designed and tested for the last 10 years, and it does use video inside the curriculum. But we're using an existing uh, curriculum. Uh, we are looking at new projects that we will be doing. So video is part of it as we evolve things. But at the moment, we are using what was made in France. So we are not creating we new content just yet, because we've just opened a year ago, so, but it's something we will do, yeah. I think video is important. Great, is there, was there another question over there? Great. Yeah, hey, my name is Marco, and I represent uh, a school here in uh, Amsterdam called Team Academy, which has a similar approach to what Kodam does, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, learning. And I was wondering, how can you encourage businesses and startups and all these sorts of enterprises to uh, use the same type of learning that you see in an educational institution, also in business, because I, I think it's also an important point. You mean that uh, business use peer-to-peer -peer learning or business recruits? Uh, well, I, I think in businesses, if you look at the new way people are working and agile ways, it is you're working as teams and groups. And that's also one of the reasons why I think that peer-to-peer -peer learning will give the students the soft skill and the skill set that you need to operate into companies. So I think that that part is often underestimated, but the, the soft skill part of what you teach in that way of and that made that peer-to-peer -peer learning method is also preparing uh, students much better for actually real life work. Um, and so that's why I think it's important. On another side, I think the, the relationship, and it's a good point you're making, is the relationship between the education system and enterprise. Uh, one of the worries I have is, um, and you all know here that tech jobs evolve. There's a lot of new uh, jobs all the time. What's a front-end programmer, a back-end programmer, an agile coach, a scrum master? All those jobs that are around, those students have no clue. And I'm starting a, a Codam X, if you want, a sort of lectures where uh, people in industry are coming and explaining what they do. I'm a that's what I do, and I invite you actually as a call for action to reach out to Kodam, come and tell us what you do, inspire our students, um, and explain to the rest of the world what is the professions that you have uh, to basically teach that next generation who's not necessarily aware about all the possibilities and interesting possibilities there is in, in the job of work. So I think that we need to create 
much uh, stronger link between industry and the education system. Uh, so we're also bringing companies to, uh, to talk so the, the students are coding. We're also bringing people from outside to explain their jobs, their role, and their expectation about the labor force of tomorrow. So I think that link is super important. Thank you guys so much for your questions and for being patient that we're a bit behind schedule and you haven't yet got your snacks for the break. And thank you so much, Corinne, for your time. It's been a real honor and it's been so great to hear so many um, important insights from you, especially as a girl in tech or wanting to get more into technology. And you should know as well that she's an amazing young woman. <laughs> so I think that we should also put the light on those young people. Because <laughs> well, no. they're taking over. No, <laughs> well, but you, yeah, I, I think I believe in, in, in the youth and in you're engaged. You, are, you, know, you, you have created a social enterprise. You are keen on social mobility and bringing education into, uh, to, to young people. And I think that's, uh, that has to be celebrated because you're going to write the future. I'm past it now, but you're <laughs> going to do it and you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> You're not past it.